I got a cool video for you guys. It's Mike, welcome to Dunmarva Backyard. You're gonna like this video about a pork shoulder that I just cooked. There's some things that pop up during the cook that happen to a lot of people when they're grilling or smoking some food. And it's awesome because it happens during the taping and get to kind of address it. So stay with me, it's a cool video, check this out. All right, so we have a pork butt, a little over seven pounds, and a little over $12, about 12 and a half dollars. So it's the night before I'm gonna cook it. What I need to do is I need to trim off the fat. Uh, I wanna trim off any visible fat. This thing is loaded with fat on the inside. I don't need a whole bunch of fat on the outside. So I wanna trim that off. All right, so now we're gonna inject the pork butt. And what I have here is a little juice box of apple juice. And then I put about the same, well, a little bit less than that, apple cider vinegar, and then a quarter cup brown sugar. And this is gonna be our injection. Pull back just a little bit before pulling it out, and it takes the pressure off. I'm using my new injector, and I love it. It's got a nozzle that has three holes on one side, three holes on the other side. Using Bad Byron's butt rub on this one. And we're also gonna add some brown sugar. This is where cutting the fat off as much as possible helps. You get a little more meat for the rub to stick to and penetrate. Okay, now we're gonna put some brown sugar on. I'm just gonna kinda let that drape over the top. And as we let that sit overnight, that's just gonna kind of liquefy. That's it, we're gonna wrap it up nice and tight and put it in the fridge overnight and it'll be ready to go first thing in the morning. So, it's the morning of the cook and I love Sundays. Sundays are football and for me barbecue, that's when I do most of my cooking and it's just a, a wonderful relaxing day and. Now, the bigger clumps that may not have soaked in, I'm just gonna kinda pull those off. I don't want them to, to burn. But other than that, you can see how it just, everything kinda just soaked in and liquefied and absorbed into the meat, so that is beautiful. That's exactly what I was looking for. I'm cooking on the Rec Tech today. You guys that follow me know this is my grill of choice. It makes things so easy and so smooth. I've got it set to 245 by simply pushing the on button, pushing it up to the LCD temperature that you want. I have the extreme smoke feature on, which gives you a little, gives you a little extra smoke content. On the surface, I have my amazing smoker tube and it is just the getting it. You can see all the smoke coming off of that guy. It's gonna last about four hours into the cook, which is when the meat's doing most of the absorbing of the smoke content. It's just gonna work wonders for putting a wonderful smoke content on this, on this pork shoulder. 
Place the porch order right on the center. And my reason for the setup is the smoker tube. The smoke's gonna draw across the porch shoulder and out the vent. Got the water pan in the back, keep things a little humid. That's it. And we're just gonna sit right there, probably for about two, maybe three hours. We're three hours into the cook, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at it, and we're gonna spritz. And what I'm spritzing with is a combination of apple juice and since I I just have it around the house because of my kids it's just box apple juice little box juice those little juice boxes and then uh, it's about two-thirds that and one-third apple cider vinegar and this is a perfect time to spritz you can see that the outside is starting to form that bark and we want to go ahead and get a spritz on it and what it's going to do is just going to help amplify that bark and keep the keep the outside moist if you spritz too early you'll wash off your rub and your seasoning so you got to let that bark develop just a little bit that's why i do about three hours in So we're seven and a half hours in. I've been spritzing for about every hour, hour and a half or so after that three hour mark. I grill two says we have an internal temperature of 143. You can kind of see that, you can kind of see the graph view as to how things have been progressing for the last couple hours. And so what I'm looking for here is basically color. Once it reaches the color that, you know, I'm happy with, then it's a matter of, you know, wrapping it, if you're gonna wrap it. For me, I'm gonna wrap it. Uh, when you wrap it, you can start really building a nice moisture and flavor profile. Uh, when you don't wrap it, it's really about building that crispy bark on the outside. Um, so, you know, I, I've got a nice bark here, and it's true, it will it will moisten up a little bit when you wrap it, but uh, I'm gonna wrap it in butcher's paper. So, butcher's paper will allow it to continue to develop a nicer bark than, than foil. Foil will definitely, uh, you know, your, your, your bark process basically ends when you use foil. Another big thing about wrapping is you can start to contain all the juices that are coming out of this guy. You can see the juices here. You want to collect those because that really helps build the flavor of the pulled pork in the end. We're just simply going to use parquet, some fake butter. We're going to drizzle it on top. Sprinkle some brown sugar on top. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of jalapeno hot sauce. Not a whole lot here, I'm just starting to build a flavor profile. And this is just gonna to start to build a little bit of a flavor profile as it cooks. I'll try to wrap it on an angle to get it all nice. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, the pan that I'm going to pull it in and I'm going to put it right there like that. That way any juices that escape the butcher paper are going to go right in the pan because I don't want to lose any. The shoulders enter in the stall, and that is where a lot of important cooking happens. The fat is rendering, and it's, it's a really important process. Uh, you don't want to disturb it too much, you just want it to do its thing. Well, patience is the, is the key here. This is something that's going to come up when you barbecue enough 
and you see these kinds of questions on forums and on Facebook and on YouTube and this is just a perfect example of, of what can happen. It's 13 hours and this little over seven pound pork butt is being a pain in the butt. It's being stubborn. Uh, it's finally come out of the it's finally come out of the stall. As you can see, I turned the temp up to 250 uh, when it was stuck pretty heavily in the stall at about 170. Um, and that's kind of pulled it out of the stall. It was in the stall for hours. And uh, that's what you want. That stall is a delicate thing. You want it to kind of do its thing right there in that stall like I was talking about. And uh, it, um, but it, it, my, my time today is running out. So I need to go ahead and push this thing along just a little bit. But 250 is the limit for me. When you start going above 250, you're changing the cooking process. Uh, you start rushing things at that point in time that you know you don't want to jeopardize your cook. You put this much time into it. It's not an expensive piece of meat, but you put a lot of time into it. So don't jeopardize the cook. Be patient with it. Um, it's going to keep me up a little later than I want it on a Sunday night, but it's going to be worth it. So I'm at 180. The temperature's moving, and uh, I would imagine she'll, she'll probably finish up in about two hours or so. At the 14 hour mark, what I wanted to do is at least check my equipment. And that's what I did. It was too dark to video it, but the rec tech, I wanted to check the temperature in the cooking chamber, and that was correct. Rec tech holds temperature very well within a degree or two. However, I don't know if that's coming through. That's the temperature, and I just brought this in. That's the temperature of the meat. Between 202 and a half to 205. So uh, the iGrill 2 was reading 187. So either I had it in a bad place, which I don't think so. I had it right in the center here and it wasn't near the bone, I don't believe. So I think I've had problems with the iGrill 2 in the past and I think it may not have, uh, you know, something was off there. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but that's, that's you know, when you know something isn't adding up, start double checking the equipment there we go guys 14 hours up to a temperature of a, around 204 and it's absolutely beautiful let's go ahead and try to get this bow now oh wow it's pulled right out of there look at that <laughs> there's the pork shoulder blade Slid right out of there. Oh wow. Just a little feel of that there. Too often I see videos on YouTube about pulled pork, but I don't see a whole lot about what they do with pulled pork afterwards. So there's a lot of juice in here. And I put a little bit of hot sauce in there and we got a lot of flavor on the outside of the pulled pork. And that's good. That's gonna be one thing I do with this. I'm gonna shred this up. Not so it's too, I don't wanna shred it into a mush, but I wanna shred it into about medium sized pieces. And then the flavor of the juice that's already in here, well, that's gonna be one flavor. But then I'm gonna take about half of this out of here. And I'm gonna put it in another container. And I'm gonna sauce that container. And that way I'll have two different flavors of pulled pork out of this one cook. And I can kind of alternate. So as we're uh, eating this during the week, you know, it's they're both gonna be delicious, but we'll have 
little bit of selection. Let's go ahead and pull some of this out of here. with this, this King's Hawaiian light roasted Kona coffee barbecue sauce. Let me give that a shot. I'm gonna sauce it kind of heavy. Just about half that bottle. Let's try the natural pulled pork first. Just something about natural pulled pork. When you when you when you stay with your patients and you let that cook happen, the results are just phenomenal. The smokiness, the little bit of spice from the jalapeno pepper sauce. Oh man, it's just good stuff right there. Now let's try the the sauced pulled pork. So you still have the, the wonderful texture and the, the smokiness, but what you're getting in addition to that is that the nice flavors of that sauce coming through. This would be perfect on little slider buns. And that's what I think I want to use it for. It is just absolutely wonderful. You go both directions and you know this way you get a little bit of each. It's just absolutely wonderful. So which one do I prefer? The sauce pulled pork, this is kind of more like you're going to find at most restaurants, grocery store, most commercial, natural pulled pork. This is going to be more what you're going to find at, you know, your backyard barbecues. Uh, maybe if you have some, uh, you know, some small time commercial guys going around, you might get some, some good natural pulled pork. That's definitely my preference. I think the pork shines through, and then the natural you know, flavors that you seasoned it with shine through. This is definitely my preference, natural pulled pork. But there's nothing wrong with changing it up and having a little variation, guys. I really appreciate you sticking around to watch the whole video. Check out these other videos over here. You may very well be interested in those also. The inspiration behind the videos is your feedback. And the best way to give me your feedback is to hit the like button down below. Most importantly, hit the subscribe button down below. And you can also leave comments. I can't wait to see you next time.